A model steamboat named Edith, part 21, repairing the paintwork. Although in this clip I'm not exactly repairing the paintwork, I'm just giving the inside of the hull a coat of grey primer. On the other hand, in this clip I'm repairing the paintwork. This is the bow area that I repaired a while back, and I reshaped the front, and it's time to give it a coat of primer. I'm not masking anything off, I'm using a piece of sandpaper to stop the overspray from going everywhere else. This saves time because it's a lot quicker than using masking tape, and in any case I'm not sure how well the original old paint is stuck to the metal, so I don't want to risk removing the old paint when I remove the masking tape. In 1999 I rebuilt a Series 2A Land Rover and I painted that in the garden using a spray gun, and I used very little masking tape. It was a soft top Land Rover, and I just used a large piece of cardboard to stop the overspray. Before the video deteriorates into a painting extravaganza, I'll show you these parts. I went over to the Leeds model shop and bought these a propeller, some couplings, and some clevises with adapters. These are the clevises I'm going to use to go from the servos to whatever they're controlling. There are only three items in the boat to control one is the regulator, one is the gas cutoff valve, and of course the other one is the rudder. So these will be ideal because I will be able to make fine adjustments and it will also allow me to use quite thick push rods so they won't bend. I'm not ready for these parts yet, so for now I've put them into my box of radio control bits, and similarly for the time being so I don't lose them, I've put the brass couplings into my box of random brass couplings. So now, sit back and relax, take your medication because it's painting time. And the first thing I need to do is match the colours. This is standard Humbrol Red and I would think that that was what the boat was painted with 50 or 60 years ago. But now with age, the paint appears darker, so standard modern Humbrol Red is a little bit too bright. Just like my pine kitchen that was fitted 26 years ago, it is now not quite as bright as it was when it was fitted. In this clip I'm painting the bottom of the hull with some Humbrol Red with a little bit of black added, and it's getting close, it's much closer than it was. I think I can possibly get the colour even closer. I'm going to add a very small amount of crimson paint to the mix, and when I do that, I think I've got it. I think that's near enough for rock and roll. And once I got the correct colour for this job, it worked out to be one brushful of black paint and two brushfuls of crimson paint added to a full pot of Humbrol Red, and the resultant paint was stirred vigorously for several minutes. I'm not saying it's exact, but it really is near enough for the colour that I want. When this paint dries, it will be just about the same colour as the old paint. So let the painting commence. Once I started painting, when I was near the bow, I noticed this. The keel is coming adrift. But once this first coat of paint has dried, I will repair this using some JB Weld. I'll show that later, because this video is made up from footage shot over a couple of days. For now, I just need to concentrate on painting one side of the hull. Being wise after the event, I should have used my new little flat brush that I bought from Leeds Model Shop. But at the time I made this video, I really didn't think to do that, so I used my normal small brush. Some viewers must be thinking, why is he using such a small brush on such a large hull? Is he stupid? Well, perhaps. Really, I should have used a slightly larger brush. But with these small brushes, you can really work the paint into every nook and cranny, and also the brush marks are very small, almost like scale brush marks, and that's the logic in using a small paintbrush. If I was to use a large paintbrush, the type that you'd normally paint woodwork in the house with, that would be too big, and there'd be runs and drips everywhere, and I'd put far too much paint on. But the resultant finish on this using the small brush may take a little bit longer, but I like it. This video is all about repairing the paintwork, remember, not repainting the entire boat. Although when I was painting the red part, the more that I painted, the more that I needed to paint, because it didn't look right with the original red paint showing through against the really nice squeaky clean and quite shiny new panels. Plus, I also detected one or two slight cracks in the joins between the panels. Even though the inside shell of the boat is now covered in glass fibre with a lot of resin, I didn't want any water to get in between the plates and cause damage by rusting the metal from the inside. Currently I'm repairing the black paint, and with that I don't have to paint all of it, I can just paint the parts that are damaged. That matches in quite well. 
So I left the paint to dry for 24 hours on the bench and the next day I came in and I'm straight into the JB Weld. Here I'm mixing some JB Weld and I'm going to repair some of the damages that I found that I wasn't aware of until I started painting. This is the damage to the keel. And in this clip I'm carefully spreading JB Weld over the damaged area. A good tip here when using JB Weld, if you wet your finger you can smooth it out very well without even rubbing it down. In this clip I'm applying some JB Weld to some of the cracks in the hull where the panels have started to lift. This should stop any ingression of water. As you can clearly see here I'm removing most of the JB Weld with a cloth. And then by using some water on my finger I can smooth out what's left. I used to do this when I used Milliput, and I used to use Milliput quite a lot, particularly when I was building model steamboats, and I found that by using water on my finger it smoothed it out beautifully, and very little sanding was needed at the end of the job. The original paintwork on this boat is a little bit on the rough side. As you can see here it's very uneven, so what I'm doing with the black is trying to get a straight line to work to. The owner of the boat and myself agreed to the fact that this boat really didn't want painting, we don't want to make it look really pretty and beautiful, because after all, it is a model of a very old fishing boat. So the fact that it looks a bit worn and quite weathered is a good thing. It adds to the authenticity. This clip is a shot of the paint actually drying in real time. I now need to leave this hull for two or three days for the paint to harden, before I can continue working on the inside of the hull. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.